Hey guys, welcome to another video. Today we're going to be doing some throwing with Viking style javelins. These are made by Waterfield Forge here in Canada. I've been beating the crap out of these and they're still lasting, so I'm really happy. Uh, thank you so much for these uh, javelin heads. Um, they do come off of the wood quite often over time, uh, but that just happens, you know, because I, might, I think my glue's not strong enough or it's just part of the nature of javelins. Over time, they're gonna come off the head. And uh, yeah, the, the wood is just from the dollar store. The wood is made in Indonesia, but as you probably noticed, they're broom handles. Uh, they're right from the dollar store, made in Indonesia, hardwood. They said hardwood, I'm not too sure if it's hardwood, but it's cheap. And uh, they, they throw pretty well, um, but I still need a lot of practice because I'm quite a beginner at throwing javelins. It, it, it's so different compared to archery, it's so different compared to slinging. It's just its own thing. And it's a lot of fun. I find compared to the three, um, this one is the most cardio that I get because it's a lot of running a lot of movement and for someone who's trying to lose weight This is the perfect sport for me archery uh, I, It's it's the least cardio sport out of these three um, Yeah, you build with your back muscles, but if you want to burn fat, this is a good sport to do So get off your phones get off TikTok, get off tinder come to the world world throw some javelins as long as it's legal where you're throwing and have fun. I mean, you get to explore your ancestry and at the same time, you get to throw some javelins. For me, it's not my ancestry, but it's just a lot of fun. Now, uh, East Asia, there are javelins, but um, they're different in design. The Manchus, for example, use javelins, um, but they're rare. I mean, like, typically East Asian cultures use more bows and crossbows. Um, not even the slings why they use here in China or Mongolia, but hey, this thing was used um, during the Stone Age. Um, we're at a gun range, by the way, so yeah, you're gonna hear guns. Um, during the during the Neolithic period and you know the early Bronze Age, even China had you know javelins because this is a very simple hunting tool that they use. I mean, spears were thrown. So compared to the sling. It's just a very different tool. These serve different purposes, and then compared to the bow as well. Sling is more like a bow, purpose for long range skirmishing, but this is typically used, uh, well, Paltas would use it as hit and run for skirmishing, but um, infantry, heavy infantry, sometimes would have these javelins, throw them, and then pull out their melee weapons. You can even use this as a melee weapon as an improvised spear and we have historical records of pilums for example being used as improvised spears but javelins too you can use them as improvised spears if you want. You see how neat how thin they are? This can penetrate chainmail because of how thin it is. Uh, thrown by a proper thrower um, he can penetrate chainmail with with gambeson but we would have to do more testing because i'm not a skilled thrower but with a skilled thrower yeah you can penetrate some he uh, some heavy armor which is awesome uh, don't expect this to penetrate um, medieval plate though it's more for something like chainmail uh, this specific design they have other heads of course for um, like broad heads for drawing out blood of course and then there's also poison you can smear feces on these get some kind of disease smear it in and then throw it at somebody and you, there's biological warfare right there now in viking warfare these are typically used to disable shields because a typical Viking warrior has a shield, and if this penetrates a shield, it is quite difficult to pull it out. I've thrown this at wood a few times and quite often gets stuck, and it takes a while, at least like 20 seconds to pull it out. And right before a melee engagement, if you're throwing it right at them and then charge at them, they really don't have time to pull it out. Um, um, if they're lucky, um, it's not stuck, and then you can pull it out. But if it's stuck in there, you don't have time. Um, and if you're strong enough, you can hold the shield, but it's going to tire your shield. And with enough javelins, you're going to have to drop the shield and then engage someone without a, without a shield. So they're quite effective at disabling shields. And the Romans knew that too. They had those specific helums designed for that. Anyways, let's do some throwing. And like I said, I'm a beginning, I'm a beginner thrower. So. Don't judge my technique too much. It's just a lot of fun, but don't judge my technique.
I mean, look at this, it broke the shaft. Some people say you can pick up the javelin and throw it back. Well, it depends. If it's broken like this, it's kind of pointless. Get it? Um, it's a lot of fun. This is a very uh, physical sport. And I feel like I'm doing a lot of cardio doing this sport. <laughs> Compared to a conventional target shooting, it's a lot of fun. Oh man, I love this sport, but it's a lot of workout. You guys should definitely check out this sport. Compared to other, like slinging or uh, archery, it's the most body intensive sport. Now compared to a sling, this ammo is so cheap, it just rocks, but you can use lead. I mean, a javelin's huge compared to this. This has a lot more range. And with a skilled slinger, it's quite deadly at that range too. But uh, both weapons are great for hit and run because they're lightweight, you can run around. With the bow, you need two hands, which is a little different. I find it harder to skirmish with.